Hey everybody, sorry about that, I was having difficulties with my webcam. The Super Vader 400 here, this is my WWE 2003 year in review, and I must say, WWE 2003 was awesome, it was, it was one of the best years of WWE, despite the crappy buy rates, and, of, and obvious, despite the crappy, um, buy rates and financial problems the company was facing this at this time but this right here in terms of matches and talent pool talent pool storylines were in my opinion was the best wwe had ever been a lot of people like to say smackdown was the best but i enjoyed both shows both raw and smackdown this year did have its flaws which i'm going to get to in a minute but this year was awesome. On Raw, you had you had talent like Goldberg, Scott Steiner, Booker T, the Dudley Boys, RVD, Chris Jericho, Christian back when he was good, um, Garrison Cade and Murdoch, Maven, Maven, for your new guys, um, Rodney Mack, Rodney Mack, Hurricane, Hurricane, and um. And um, Kane, and you had um, Eric Bischoff as heel co-general co manager, and yet Stone Cold Steve Austin as the face co-GM general manager after he retired. So you also had um, Austin, and you also had The Rock and Jeff Hardy, and even the Divas, which I didn't, I didn't um, the Divas at that time were pretty good on Raw, which. I've always been a fan of several of the Diva wrestlers, but I never really cared. I never really had much appreciation for the Divas division. But the Divas division, you have Victoria, Jazz, Trish Stratus, Gail Kim, Molly Holly, Molly Holly, Jacqueline, and and it was just um and Lita. It was Raw was just an um awesome show to watch. And then of course um you had stables like Evolution with Triple H, Batista, Ric Flair. An up and coming wrestler, Randy Orton, at that time. Um, WWE Raw was just an um awesome show. The only thing I hate about Raw during this period was Triple H, of course, burying everyone, and Kevin Nash, who, in my opinion, had no business being on this new roster with full of fresh, young, and established talent. I didn't think Kevin Nash had any business being on that um roster, and he kind of killed the product be being on the um roster which I'm going to get to at the end of this video, but that was Raw. Then for SmackDown, my guy, SmackDown, the show people said was the was the best show. SmackDown, you had Brock Lesnar, Chris Benoit, Chris Benoit, John Cena during his Doctor of Thugonomics days back when he was good, um, Undertaker, Deadman gimmick, A-Train. He was way better here than he is today as Tensai, A-Train. Big Show, Big Show was way better then than he is today. Then you had um, you had Sean O'Hare, Eddie Guerrero, um, Chuck Palumbo, Johnny Stamboli, Nunzio. I thought he was better in ECW, but he had some cool cruiserweight matches in WWE. I thought he was better in ECW as Guido, though. Um, you had um, Tajiri, Tajiri, Rhino, Rhino, um. Eddie Guerrero, Eddie Guerrero, Chavo Guerrero, the Basham Brothers, Charlie Haas and Benjamin, Benjamin, um, Rowdy Rowdy Piper, back when he was still good, made one of his last appearances briefly on the, um, SmackDown brand, then of course you had, um, then of course, um, later on in that year, and of course, then of course you had Hardcore Holly returning from injury, you had Shannon Moore, Ultimo Dragon, um, Matt, up and coming star Matt Morgan, up and coming star Nathan Jones, Nathan Jones, WCW wrestler Bill DeMont, Hugh Morris from what's his name, Hugh Morris from WCW, um, Rikishi, Rikishi, um, like I said, yeah, SmackDown was just an um, awesome roster, I really didn't care much for the Divas, you had Divas like Tori Wilson, Don Marie, and stuff, that stuff I didn't, um, that's the stuff I didn't, um, um, like, but, both shows were awesome and full of, and full of awesome talent. Both shows were awesome and full of awesome talent. 
Then, of course, you had awesome feuds and storyline. On Raw, I enjoyed the Scott Steiner Triple H feud, even though a lot of people didn't enjoy the matches. I enjoyed both of those matches. When Triple H said there was no competition and Scott Steiner came out there, you know, I, I, went, I went out of my seat. I never thought I would see Scott Steiner again because, you know, WCW had closed down. And I didn't think I'd ever see Steiner back in WWE. Then, of course, you had, um, then, of course, after Steiner got moved to the mid-card, you had Triple H and Booker T. I enjoyed this feud in the matches, even though I didn't like Booker T being buried, but the feud was awesome. I thought um, Booker T Booker T and Christian, I thought that was a good mid-card Intercontinental feud back when the Intercontinental title meant something. Then you had Triple H and Goldberg, in my opinion, another awesome um, feud. I hated Triple H. I hated Triple H and wanted Goldberg. And whomever, Goldberg and whomever to beat up Evolution. Evolution were awesome heels with whomever they feuded um feuded with. Then of course, um you had the Dudley Boys, their feud with Co GM, Eric Bischoff and Val Venus, aka Sean Morley at this time. Then you had um you had Triple H and Kane's feud, which led to Kane unmasking. Then that whole storyline with Kane being unmasked and going and state, going unstable, turning heel, going unstable, and destroying everyone in his path. That was an awesome um storyline. Even though I thought they started to weaken his character the, in the next year, but Kane was um awesome at that time. You also had Kane and RVD feud after after a brief stint as tag team partners. They finally feuded. That was awesome. Um um. Then, of course, you had Jer Brief Jericho and Goldberg feud. I thought that was pretty awesome while it lasted with Christian involved. Then you had um, the Dudley Boys feud with up, and, with up and coming team La Resistance, which I found entertaining. Then the much better feud with, um, what's those guys' name? Garrison Cade and Mark Jindrak, who, in my opinion, both should have been bigger in WWE. Um, so, yeah, that's all the stuff. That's all the awesome stuff you had on Raw. Then on SmackDown, you had Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar feud. You had Kurt Angle and Chris Benoit feud before that. Then you had Chris Benoit, Chris Benoit, Chris Benoit's feud, Chris Benoit's feud with Kurt Angle and Team Angle. I just said that. Then, of course, you had um the awesome tag team of Chris Benoit and Rhino. Rhino. Then, of course, you had um Chris Benoit's brief mid-card feud with brief mid-card feud with Eddie Guerrero doing Eddie Guerrero's brief heel turn before he went back to being a face. Then yet Eddie Guerrero's feud with the Big Show, which was uh, hilarious, 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 and was grooming Eddie Guerrero as a future um, main eventer. Then you had um, Eddie Guerrero, then you had um, um, awesome mid-card feuds like Eddie Guerrero and Tajiri versus Sean O'Hare and um, Piper, Piper. Then, of course, you had Hulk Hogan versus Vince McMahon, 20 years in the making. I thought that was awesome. Then, of course, like I said, then, of course, going back to the Brock Lesnar and Kurt Angle feud, that whole feud, that whole year, first off, they started off with Kurt Angle as the heel and Brock Lesnar as the face when it started. Then, of course, then, of course, they became friends. Then Brock Lesnar sold his soul to become WWE champion and turned on Angle, thus becoming the heel in the feud. And then Kurt Angle was, this time, Kurt Angle was the face. Then they incorporated other people into their feud. Brock Lesnar with Team Brock incorporated A-Train, A-Train, um, what's the other guy's name? Matt Morgan and, um, and, um, Nathan Jones and the Big Show into his feud. Then, of course, Kurt Angle incorporated Chris Benoit, Hardcore Holly, APA, and um, and um, the wild card, John Cena, who was a heel but then turned face. And speaking of John Cena as a heel, you had Brock Lesnar and John Cena, in my opinion, one of John Cena's um, best feuds, best feuds, best feuds, um, best feuds ever. And, of course, now that was, um, that was um rivalries and feuds. Now for like awesome matches, matches. Also before before I get to awesome matches, you also have Brock Lesnar and Big Show and their awesome feud. Watching Brock Lesnar toss Big Show around was just epic. Now let's go to awesome matches and first match I gotta mention that sticks out of my mind is from the SmackDown brand. Brock Lesnar and Big Show. They had some awesome matches. They had the first one at the, for for 2003. They had the first one at the Royal Rumble to decide who gets into the Royal Rumble. Watching Brock Lesnar, that was an awesome match to start the show, and watching Brock Lesnar just muscle and toss around 
the over four the over four hundred the nearly four hundred pound big show was um the over four hundred pound big show was awesome. Then of course you had um then of course you had that epic, exciting match between Brock Lesnar and Kurt Angle at WrestleMania nineteen, the first time two NCAA champions main evented a WrestleMania. Then of course you had um on SmackDown, you had Brock Lesnar and Big Show, where Brock Lesnar superplexed Big Show off the top rope, and then ring broke. You know how epic that was when I saw it for the first time as a child. Then, of course, you had Brock Lesnar and Big Show at Judgment Day, when after the match, Brock Lesnar put Big Show on a forklift and rose him up in the air after he beat him. That was um, an epic match. For I thought Judgment Day was a weak pay-per-view, but that was an epic match. Then, of course, you had... SummerSlam, you had Brock Lesnar and Kurt Angle to rematch, this time with Kurt Angle winning and Brock Lesnar tapping out, tapping out for the first time, I think, in his career. Then you had um, Brock Lesnar versus, um, Brock Lesnar versus, um, Brock Lesnar versus John Cena, John Cena at, um, at Backlash 2003, that was an awesome street fight, that was an awesome no disqualification match, and really, which we still have to put up with today show that John Cena has the potential to be a future main eventer which we still have to put up with to, to today then you have Brock Lesnar's um then Brock Lesnar um then on Smackdown he had another he had a six man tag match with him with Brock Lesnar Mr. America and Kurt Angle and Kurt Angle versus I think it was um versus Kurt Angle and Big Show and, T and Team um Big Show and the and the world's greatest tag team, an awesome six man um tag team, awesome six man tag team main event on um SmackDown. That was an, on the June twenty eighth June twenty eighth two thousand three edition of SmackDown. Then of course you had um Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar um Team Brock, Team Brock, Brock Lesnar, Nathan Jones, Matt Morgan, Big Show, and A Train versus John Cena, Chris Benoit. Kurt Angle and a, and um, Bradshaw and Hardcore Holly. I thought that was an awesome traditional Survivor Series um match. Then Brock Lesnar had another awesome match at No Mercy 2003, which I thought was a weak pay per view. But his match, his rematch with Undertaker from 2002, was um was awesome. Then of course on Raw, you had Chris Benoit versus John Cena. This was an awesome match, and the winner fought Brock Lesnar. And Chris Benoit and Brock Lesnar had an awesome. WWE Championship match with Brock Lesnar winning on top, but Chris Benoit showing you that he has what it takes to eventually win the belts and be a main eventer. Awesome um match matches there. Then for mid card, you had the debut of Ultimo Dragon beating Shannon Moore. An awesome debut match. Matt Mo Matt Hardy and Rey Mysterio in two back to back cruiserweight matches, with one of them being Mysterio winning in his hometown in his hometown of San Diego. And then, of course, you had um, you had um, another awesome six-man tag team match between um, APA, APA, and the Undertaker versus FBI Johnny Stimboli, Nunzio, and Chuck Palumbo. This was an awesome match. Undertaker wrestling a awesome big man match with Johnny Stimboli. Johnny Stimboli was criminally underrated. You also had the um, at Vengeance. You also had the APA Invitational. The large battle royal and the main event which was Brock Lesnar versus Big Show versus Kurt Angle that was another awesome match then Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero United States title match Chris Benoit uh, Eddie Guerrero's match with Ultimo Dragon to get to Chris Benoit Chris Benoit cr to beat Chris Benoit in the finals for the United, for the new newly crowned United States Championship Eddie Guerrero and Eddie Guerrero and Tajiri versus Chav versus Roddy Roddy Piper and Sean O'Hare. That was another awesome tag team match while Chavo was injured. Los Guerreros had awesome matches with World's Greatest Tag Team, the Bastion Brothers, the Bastion Brothers, and um, Brock Lesnar's match with Matt Mo with Matt Hardy, champion versus champion, cruiserweight champion versus WWE champion. So many awesome matches. Um. From the SmackDown brand, the debut of Orlando Jordan, Orlando Jordan, who I was a huge fan of, who I'm still in today, who I'm, who I'm a huge fan of, against John Cena and John Cena, hilarious promo before the match. Then later, then Orlando Jordan wrestling, um, 
Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar in a WWE Championship match. A rookie like Orlando Jordan getting to wrestle Brock Lesnar. Then on Raw, of course, I enjoyed this, the matches with Steiner and Triple H. I thought the first match, well, I thought it went on way too long. I love Steiner beating up Triple H and just must, tossing, him, tossing him around with a, lots of awesome suplexes. And then... Then the second match, which in my opinion went at the correct length, Steiner and Triple H wrestling an um, awesome quick match, which is what the sh first one should have been, and Triple H is being an awesome heel in that match. Triple H's matches with Booker T, especially that WrestleMania 19 match, except for the ending, that match, though these were some awesome um wrestling matches, in my opinion, some of Triple H's best. Then, of course, um... Triple H, his series of matches with Goldbergs, that was awesome, first, the first encounter with them was at SummerSlam, SummerSlam, when Goldberg, when, when Goldberg, when he busted out of the chamber, busted out of the elimination chamber and destroyed everyone, then destroyed Triple H, and out of nowhere, the worst part, Randy Orton tossed Triple H to Sledgehammer, he hits Goldberg with it, Goldberg wins, then you had the match at Unforgiven, where Goldberg finally beat Triple H, the game, the World Heavyweight Championship. That was an awesome moment. Then you had um then you had the um rematch at the next pay per view Survivor Series. This was an awesome match with Goldberg retaining the championship. Retaining the championship and um the Kane Triple H and Goldberg match, I really didn't like that match, but uh that was a uh, um that was still a good match, but I hated it because Goldberg lost it. And I hated Triple H for beating um Goldberg. You also had awesome matches with, with the Dudley Boys, with the Dudley Boys, RVD and Kane. The Dudley Boys had an awesome, had awesome matches with Law Resistance and the up and coming team, Garrison Kane and Mark Jindrak. Maven, Maven in one of his biggest matches had an awesome match, teaming up with Jindrak and Kane, taking on Evolution, taking on Evolution. Um, another awesome six man tag match involved Goldberg. Goldberg, Shawn Michaels, Shawn Michaels, um, who was the third man, I think it was Maven, I think it was Maven, Shawn Michaels, um, Goldberg and Maven taking on Triple H, Batista and Ric Flair, right, no, not, yeah, yeah, Triple H, Batista, Triple H, Batista and Randy Orton, I think, yeah, Triple H, Batista and Randy Orton, Goldberg having an awesome match with Flair, an awesome cage match with Christian, who was part of the Chris Jericho versus Goldberg feud, and Goldberg and Chris Jericho had Bad Blood. I thought Bad Blood was a weak pay-per-view, but Goldberg's match with Goldberg's match with Chris Jericho was awesome. That was an awesome, exciting match. Then, of course, you had um, um, Booker T and Christian Intercontinental Title match, Intercontinental Title match at that um pay-per-view. Then the rematch on um Raw where Booker T finally won the Intercontinental Championship. And um, the intercon the, then the battle royal, then the battle royal to crown the new intercontinental championship with Christian, which Christian cheated to win. That was an awesome um match at um I think that was um Judgment Day, which I thought was a weak pay per view, but that was one of the more awesome matches on that pay per view. Um, speaking of Judgment Day 2003, of course, then you had um Johnny Stum FBI. FBI, you had Johnny Stimboli and Chuck Palumbo teaming up with John Cena to take on Chris Benoit, Rhino, and um, Spanky. That was an awesome mid-card six-man tag team match. Odd pairings, but just an awesome match. Awesome uh, match. And um, so, um, yeah, then uh, um, Rodney Max White Boy Challenge, which included one appearance from a future WWE superstar, Ken Ken Doan, aka Kenny Dykstra. Um, that was um, that was some awesome stuff. Um, um, Hurricane and um, Kane. Um, um, well, I'll, that that's an awesome moment. So, what about more awesome matches? So, yeah, that was all the um awesome uh, matches you had now for the um now for the um now for the um um best shows of course Royal Rumble 2003 I thought the whole card was awesome and the whole Royal Rumble 2003 was awesome and it was epic seeing Brock Lesnar win win and go on to WrestleMania to fight what's his name then you had No Way Out 2003 awesome card with matches like Chris Jericho and Hardy to start the show The Rock versus um the rock versus um hulk hogan the rock 
versus Hulk Hogan in a rematch with this time with The Rock being the heel. That was awesome. And the way it ended, Austin and Eric Bischoff, that was an awesome um beatdown. That was an awesome beatdown type match and had an awesome feud to it with Bischoff firing Austin back in the WCW days and saying he would never amount to anything. That was awesome. And then um, you had the main event with Edge being injured, so it was Brock Lesnar and Chris Benoit taking on Team Angle in a handicap match. That was awesome. Then you got the epic WrestleMania 19, and boy, from start to finish, this was an awesome match. You started off with a pretty good Cruiserweight title match between Matt Hardy and Mysterio, then a pretty good handicap match between Undertaker and Big Show and A-Train. Even the Divas match was awesome. Then you get to the good stuff. Um, um, then you get to the good stuff. Chris Benoit and Ryan O versus Los Guerreros versus Team Angle in an awesome um triple threat tag team um championship match. Then um Booker T and Triple H in an awesome world heavyweight title match. Chris Jericho and Shawn Michaels dream match. Awesome stuff. This was an awesome um, pay per view. Then of course you had um um Brock Lesnar. Then of course you had um Austin and The Rock. The final match. The final match in their series and Austin's last match. Then um you have um then you have um the main event. Then you have um the main event which was Kurt Angle versus Brock Lesnar, two NCAA champions, main eventing WrestleMania, main eventing um WrestleMania. Then of course you had um then of course um Next pay per view, Backlash 2003. This was rated in PWI as the worst pay per view of 2003, but I enjoyed this pay per view. I thought the card was awesome, and I loved the main event, which was The Rock. Which was The Rock. I loved the two double main events, which was Brock Lesnar and John Cena, and The Rock versus Goldberg. Goldberg and Rock, they weren't given much time, but this was an awesome match. The crowd was into the match the whole time. Goes to show you how awesome The Rock and Goldberg was. And I wish they could have had a longer feud in a match because The Rock and Goldberg, that was an awesome, awesome feud in matches. But The Rock left for Hollywood. But I wish Rock would have stayed and they would have wrestled more matches because this was, this was awesome um, right here. Then, of course, you had um, SummerSlam. Then, of course, you have Vengeance 2003, which I thought from beginning to end was an awesome show. I talked about most of those matches earlier. Then you had SummerSlam 2003 with um, Kane and RVD. Kane and um, RVD, um, the Dudley Boys and La Resistance, and the main event, which was the Chamber um, the chamber match. The Chamber um, match. And... Um, then you had um, Unforgiven 2003, which I thought was an awesome paper. You, Randy Orton and Shawn Michaels, um, Goldberg and Triple H with Goldberg this time winning the championship. RVD and Christian, RVD and Christian Intercontinental Title match. Then Survivor Series 2003, Team Austin versus Team Bischoff, Team Angle versus Team Brock Lesnar versus Team Lesnar, and um, main event which was Goldberg and Triple H. Awesome. Um, show awesome um awesome show so um yeah now for the bad this was the worst this was the worst stuff in um this was the worst stuff of 2003 um triple h of course burying everyone he buried every wcw superstar he buried every wcw superstar including booker t steiner steiner goldberg and um and um Gold, Goldberg Goldberg then he participated in a crappy feud with Kevin Nash the superstar who should have been buried the most Kevin Nash should not even been in WWE by this point nobody cared about Nash except for me at the time now that I'm older I can see how bringing him back without the NWO was bad for business it was cool when he first came back in 2002 because he had Hall and Pac he had Hall, Pac and Michaels um with him but Without and Hogan with him, without the NWO, Nash is worthless, and bringing him back was just um crappy. This was a crappy feud, leading to lots of crappy matches between the um between the two. And Triple H, of course, burying Goldberg by beating him at um Armageddon. And then they put Goldberg in a feud with Lesnar. No wonder Goldberg left. But um yeah, but you had so much young talent here. But you had Triple H taking up TV time, being. He was a good heel, but he was taking up too many time and beat a lot of people he shouldn't have beat. It. Then verbally buried Booker T 
first off, with that racist promo, then beating him in the ring, then beating him um, in the ring, making it sound like all the racist stuff he said was true. Then, of course, um, then, of course, um, um, so that's, um, only problems, um, that's one of the only problems I had, that's one of the only problems I had with 2003, oh, and the over-pushing of John Cena, John Cena, if you go back and watch SmackDown, if you go look at all the young stars at that time, the star they were pushing the most is John Cena, they were building him up and elevating him the most, they didn't really care about all the other guys you saw there, like Johnny Stimboli, Sean O'Hare, Orlando Jordan, they cared more about elevating, um, John Cena, John, um, John Cena, and of course, also, misutilization of talent, like Johnny Stimboli, Sh Sean O'Hare, Sean O'Hare, um, Chuck Palumbo, Tommy Dreamer, Tommy Dreamer, and, um, and yes, pretty much focusing on people like Triple H and John Cena over the entire roster is the only problem I have with, um, 2003. All right. Well, this is my WWE 2003 year review. I'll do um. I'll do um. I'll do pay per view reviews. Um. I'll do a pay per view 2003 review sometime in the future. All right. Super Vader out.